Good morning, everyone. We offer this Mass for the, our batch sponsor for today, Batch 93, as we open this uh, new year no, in this spring festival, turning to the year of the tiger. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Today, we reflect on two uh, inaugurations of two prophets, no? Jeremiah in the first reading and Jesus in the gospel for today. We ask the Lord for mercy and forgiveness for the sins we have committed in our lives. I confess to Almighty, Almighty God, God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask, Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on all of us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us give glory to God.
let us pray, my brothers and sisters. Grant us, Lord our God, that we may honor you with all our mind and love everyone in truth of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The first reading, a reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I dedicated you. A prophet to the nations, I appointed you. But do you gird your loins? Stand up and tell them all that I command you. Be not crushed on their account, as though I would leave you crushed before them. For it is I this day who have made you a fortified city, a pillar of iron, a wall of brass, against the whole land, against Judah's kings and princes, against its priests and people. They will fight against you, but not prevail over you. For I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm, our response is, I will sing of your salvation. I will sing for your salvation. In you, O Lord, I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your justice, rescue me and deliver me. Incline your ear to me and save me. Response. I will sing of your, of your salvation. salvation. Be my rock of refuge, a stronghold to give me safety. For you are my rock and my fortress. O my God, rescue me from the hand of the wicked. Response. I will, I will sing, sing of, of your, your salvation. salvation. For you are my hope, O Lord, my trust, O God, from my youth. On you I depend from birth. From my mother's womb you are my strength. Response. I will, I will sing, sing of, of your, your salvation. salvation. My mouth shall declare your justice, day by day your salvation. O God, you have taught me from my youth, and till the present I proclaim your wondrous deeds. Response. I will, I will sing, sing of, of your, your salvation. salvation. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Love is patient, love is kind. It is not jealous, it is not pompous. It is not inflated, it is not rude. It does not seek its own interests. It is not quick-tempered, it does not brood over injury. It does not rejoice over wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. If there are prophecies, they will be brought to nothing. If tongues, they will cease. If knowledge, it will be brought to nothing. For we know partially, and we prophesy partially. But when the perfect comes, the partial will pass away. When I was a child, I used to talk as a child, think as a child, reason as a child. When I became a man, I put aside childish things. At present, we see indistinctly as in a mirror, but then face to face. At present, I know partially, then I shall know fully, as I am fully known. So faith, hope, love remain. These three, but the greatest of these is love. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord sent me to bring glad tidings to the poor, to proclaim liberty to captives. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A proclamation of the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus began speaking in the synagogue, saying, Today, this scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing. And all spoke highly of him, 
and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. They also asked, Isn't this the son of Joseph? He said to them, Surely you will quote me this proverb, Physician, cure yourself, and say, Do here in your native place the things that we heard were done in Capernaum. And he said, Amen, I say to you, no prophet is accepted in his own native place. Indeed, I tell you, there were many widows in Israel in the days of Elijah, when the sky was closed for three and a half years, and a severe famine spread over the entire land. It was to none of these that Elijah was sent, but only to a widow in Saripath in the land of Sidon. Again, there were many lepers in Israel during the time of Elisha, the prophet. Yet not one of them was cleansed, <clears throat> but only Naaman, the Syrian. When the people in the synagogue heard this, they were all filled with fury. They rose up and drove him out of the town and led him over the brow of the hill on which their own town had been built to hurl him down headlong. But Jesus passed through their, the midst of them and went away. My brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the readings today are, you can say, inauguration of two prophetic careers, that of Jeremiah and that of Jesus. In the reading of Je Jeremiah, it says, Before I form you in the womb of your mother, I knew you. A prophet to the nations, I appointed you. Extraordinary words, isn't it? But note that it says, a prophet for Israel. No, no, it doesn't say. A prophet for the nations, I have appointed you. So it's bigger than Israel. It is for the nations. And it is this line that is important when we read the gospel for today. No, Jesus comes home to his native place, goes to the synagogue, and chooses a passage and reads to them. It's a reading from Isaiah. It is about what the Messiah would do when he comes into the world. No, The blind would see, the deaf would hear, the captives will be set free, and he will declare a year of favor, a year of favor from the Lord. No, But here is the radical difference. Jesus is, say, is saying that Say, not saying this, one day this would happen. What he said is this, today, this scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing. That's the extraordinary words in, the, in Jesus, no? very breathtaking. Now the audience, Israel, his native place, they know about what the Messiah would do. But it was always like a dream, a hope that one day would come. So to hear one of them say, today this is fulfilled in your hearing, that is breathtaking word for all of them and you can say for all of us. So what's the reaction from the audience? At first, they were very positive about his words. They spoke highly of him. And we will know why. They said, um, isn't this the son of Joseph? Isn't Joseph a local boy? And therefore, the father of the Messiah is a local boy. This is good for all of us because we know his father. This will benefit us, people of Nazareth. And Jesus reads their minds and says, Surely you will quote in the proverb, Do here what you are doing in other places, etc., etc. So the buzz about Jesus have gone around. They know that he has been preaching and teaching. He has been curing the sick and doing remarkable, amazing things. Now that he is back home, and now that he declares that he is the Messiah, the people will, were expecting that they will be flooded with benefits. Sabi nga nila, all politics is local. Dapat makinabang tayo dyan. So, ganun, no? But, you know, what does Jesus do? No, Instead of taking this uh, positive, uh, you know, uh, response of the people to the advantage of the mission, he cites two uneasy stories. One is Elijah. During the time of the drought, Elijah, Elijah the prophet, was not sent for Israel but to a widow of Sidon, 
the widow of Saripath. He was sent to a foreigner. At the time of great need, he was not sent to an Israelite but to an outsider. This prophet benefits the locals outside, or not the locals, but the outsiders. The second uneasy story is the one of Elisha, the um, successor of Elijah, no? a foreigner from a rival country, from Syria, Naaman, the, a leper, came to Elisha for healing. And he was healed at that time. No? A foreigner in time of need benefited from a prophet of Israel. No? God attended to the need of other nations and not to the need of Israel alone. So that's the one. So what is Jesus saying? He is reminding his town people from their religious tradition that is often overlooked that we already see in Jeremiah. He is a prophet for Israel, yes, but for the nations. That Israel exists not only for itself, but for the sake of the world. You have to be, sa atin nga sa Savior, light for the others. Light is given to you, but not only for you. You are to become a light for others. No, It goes to you, but to the others as well. No. So, Israel is the same, given so much graces, but for the other nations. So, uh, when the people heard these very unpopular words, they were angry at Jesus and they wanted to, to kill him, no? to um, throw him over the cliff. So, my dear friends, if we reflect on this, you know, what, it's, what is in this for us? Maybe this one. We have a tendency to read our religious life in a self-interested way, you know, in a way, you know. You know, if I go to Mass, if I follow God's moral law, maybe God will give me good things. Yan yung prosperity gospel that one time suggests with residents, Father Ari was telling us about. So, you know, if I do follow, uh, go to Mass, follow God's moral teaching, etc., then many things would come to me. The challenge here is this. Find a page in the Bible that God says so. That if you will follow God's commands, etc., God will give you so much comfort and assurance. Actually, how is God acting if you look at the Bible? God is acting in such a way that the grace He gives you, He gives us, is meant to be given away. The grace He gives us is meant to be given away. Yes, the Lord gives us grace, gives us vocation, reveals things to us, draws us into His life, invites us to liturgy and moral excellence. All that is grace and it's good. What is it meant to do? It is meant to flow through us to become a grace for others, to become a light for others. If you are a savior, you know, given, light given to you but meant to let our light shine for the others. But Lord, you know, I, I do all these things, Lord. What benefit is there for me? Yeah, it goes to you and it's supposed to flow to others. So, in this reading of Jeremiah, a prophet for the nations, in the gospel today that Jesus is not only for Nazareth, we unearth this fundamental spiritual principle. The grace you have given is not meant for you. It is now meant to be given to you, to the world. To follow that, you find yourself increasing 30, 50, and 100 fold. And may God bless all of us. Let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe, I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, God substantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, he was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. 
and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We now gather our prayers. At baptism, we have come to share in the prophetic mission of Jesus. Aware of the difficulty of being a faithful prophet in our society, we pray, Lord, graciously hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. That the whole church, under the guidance of her leaders, may fulfill her mission of proclaiming the word of God to all peoples. Let us pray. Lord, graciously hear us. That all believers may faithfully fulfill their task of being prophets of God in the places where they live. Let us pray. Lord, graciously hear us. That those who are persecuted on account of their commitment to promote justice may bravely persevere in their mission let us pray. Lord, graciously hear us. That those who are fostering dialogue and peace between warring factions may succeed in their praiseworthy undertaking. Let us pray. Lord, graciously hear us. That those who find it hard to love as Christ did may persevere in their effort, remembering that love is all that matters, both in this life and in the next. Let us pray. Lord, graciously hear us that those who are involved in the biblical apostolate may harvest abundant fruits of their efforts and never be discouraged by oppositions or setbacks. Let us pray. Lord, graciously hear us. That, as we celebrate National Bible Sunday today, take it as a challenge to read the Word of God every day. Listen to His message for us and live it out in our lives. Let us pray. Lord, graciously hear us. That all of us who are affected by the pandemic be guided by your love and mercy to trust you that all will be well. Let us pray. Lord, graciously hear us. That those who are sick and suffering be healed by your love and mercy, knowing that this is just temporary, and that those who have left us are now free from pain and hurt because of your love and mercy. Let us pray. Lord, graciously hear us. For our batch 93 brothers who have been called ahead to heaven. May they enjoy eternal peace in the presence of the Lord and may their families and loved ones continue to maintain their faith in the Lord and in the church. Let us pray. Lord, graciously hear us, that we, Batch 93, and the Savior community may be strong in our brotherhood. With your love and mercy, may we overcome and soon celebrate victory together. Let us pray. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us pray in silence for our personal intentions. Let us pray. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord, grant us courage and wisdom, faithfulness and consistency as we carry out our prophetic mission in spite of mockery or persecutions. You who live in triumph forever and ever. Amen. We now offer ourselves with the bread and wine. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. 
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. This is the God for When we come to the Eucharist, we bring with us the sacrifices that we make for our family, sacrifice we make for our community and church, for country and loving God. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty and loving Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the grace and glorious name for our good and good of all His holy church. O Lord, bring, we bring to your altar these offerings of our service. Be pleased to receive them, we pray, and transform them into the sacrament of our redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer, to be like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son. By whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we have lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ, Christ will, come will come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Jose, our Archbishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. Joseph, her husband, with the blessed apostles and all the saints, who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus the Christ. For it is through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. We now call on God, our loving Father. Our, our Father, Father in heaven, Holy be your name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, 
that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your people, your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. We offer each other a sign of peace. Peace to all of you who are watching from home. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. My brothers and sisters, this is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who are always invited to his banquet. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. We now pray an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I give that you, I believe that you are in the blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Do not let your hearts be troubled Do not stay afraid It is really I whom you see I offer you now my peace I have waited for this moment To be with you again In my heart you'll remain In your heart I'll stay Till the end of your day
Let us pray. Nourished by these redeeming gifts, we pray, O Lord, that through this help to eternal salvation, true faith may ever increase. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We now pray the Oratio Imperata. Merciful and compassionate Father, we ask for your protection against a COVID-19 virus that has disturbed our lives. Kindly look upon us with love, and by your healing hand, dispel our fears, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. Please guide the people tasked to find cures for the disease and stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines already developed, which we hope will soon bring an end to this pandemic. We pray for the health, well-being, and protection of our healthcare workers as, as they minister to the sick with their competence and their compassion. Restore the health of those who are afflicted, protect those who, are, who care for them, and grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace of openness to help those in need. May this concern and compassion see us through this crisis and lead us to, lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all these through our Christ, our through Lord our Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. We fly to your protection, O, o Mother, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petitions in our necessities, but deliver us always from all danger, O, o Glorious and Blessed Virgin. Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, pray, pray for, for us. us. We thank our uh, alumni who are here with us, no? Dr. Jonathan D., Justin Nang, and Arthur Tanko. We thank Alin Go Chang and Oliver Ang for recruiting them to be readers and commentators. Our Mass tomorrow is at 9 a.m., uh, celebrating the uh, Chinese uh, New Year, lunar calendar. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless us all. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.